So hello everyone. Uh, again, we're back for Sajid Asks. With me today, I have uh, Naim Bhai, who is Bangladeshi living in Abu Dhabi, right? Uh, so it's a very interesting setup because we have Rakib on the line as well. He's in Dhaka tonight. Uh, Naim Bhai is in uh, Abu Dhabi, hopefully. If not, he's in Dubai, one of those two cities. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Yeah. And me, I'm in Washington, D.C. Well, near Washington, D.C. in America. It's a small world. So, yeah. It's small world. Technology has brought us together. So I actually wanted to make a change and actually start talking, bring on more impact in entrepreneurs uh, on the show or, yeah, let's call it a show. So in the talk about, you know, why they chose Bangladesh, what they're doing in Bangladesh, how they are, you know, promoting Bangladesh and how, what kind of um, opportunities, growth and other positive things they see in Bangladesh. So normally what happens is, uh, and what I've been doing as well, is that, you know, people are very negative about Bangladesh, right? Uh, so they go, you open up a newspaper and you see it's negative news. I mean, again, then again, it makes sense because they're in the business of selling negative news. And nobody's going to buy a newspaper if it's all full of positive news. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, and people think, oh, they lose hope that saying there's nothing, no opportunity or no growth in Bangladesh. Then again, then there are those uh, weird or <laughs> mentally unstable people who thinks there is growth and opportunities in Bangladesh. And Naim Bhai happens to be one of those people. <laughs> and Even <Sajid>, you? <laughs> I am. I mean, you know, that's everyone in yeah. Dhaka knows yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, you know, let's bring him online and let's talk to him and let's figure out. So with, without any further delay, Naim Bhai, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, thank very you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so with that, you know, can you share, let's start with introduction, right? You know, how did you end up with Abu Dhabi, some background, and then why Bangladesh, and we'll dive deeper later on. Sure. I mean, I'll start uh, right at the beginning, I think. I was born in Abu Dhabi. Uh, born and bred, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I always knew where my roots were. But uh, the first time I ever flew to Bangladesh was when I was 13 years old, and uh, so suddenly I found out, oh, I have uh, this other set of family somewhere living somewhere else, right? Uh, but then, yeah, I, I barely flew to Bangladesh; had barely any connection uh, for the great part of my uh, greater part of my life up until I uh, was you know, 20 years old, uh, headed to Australia for education, came back, uh, you know, went into the nine to five, uh, nine to five uh, drill uh, of full-time work, but uh, always felt something was lacking. And, you know, I was like, hey, you know, I, I'd rather spend uh, 12 hours working for myself rather than, uh, you know, you know, busting myself to, for, for another company. And uh, so I started out um, with my own company, setting up for the first company in Abu Dhabi. 
called this and that, uh, which uh, I just recently uh, had a beta launch at Jitex, which uh, you saw just a few days ago. And uh, as I was developing that platform, uh, we first uh, outsourced it to a company in uh, uh, in Chennai. And uh, once I was going through uh, all the dev back and forth with regards to the development, you know, a couple of issues, you know, things where let's say not up to the mark i flew down to chennai and then they did a demo things didn't go as planned and you know the company was great but unfortunately i think i was too small a company for uh let's say the 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 senior guys to jump on board and getting the things done right uh in the first time around so you know, I came back from India. I'm t- talking to my family like, oh, my God, you know, that was me. I mean, we've wasted like good part of six to eight months on, on development and design. And we've, we're nowhere to show and nothing to show for uh, to our merchants that I have been doing the ground, laying the groundwork in Abu Dhabi. And uh, so me and my dad were like, hey, you know what? Let's try uh, Bangladesh. You know, like uh, we, we have been, uh, you know, Bangladesh is uh, growing up in the ICT sector and uh and again, I think a lot, a lot, a lot, uh, 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 hesitation on my part to go to Bangladesh, set something up because you know I've never lived there. I don't know the the lay of the land. I don't know where to even like where to approach to even set up a company. Luckily, my cousin brother who was also looking for a job, I'm like you're hired, <laughs> and uh, uh, he's like, oh cool, you know, well, which for which company? I'm like. It's not there yet. You need to set up the company. <laughs> so yeah, and then then the whole journey started to you know the learning the ropes in Bangladesh, like how to set up a company. And as you very well may know, it's uh, it's not necessarily let's say straightforward. Um, um, however, we managed to get things done in 20, uh, 2015. Um, then you know we started hiring by 2016, and the same team uh, that we hired in uh, the company we called call Tectonics in Dhaka, and they set up, they helped me build the the platform for this and that in Abu Dhabi. And now uh, close to two years down, um, we've uh, looked into building our let's say pilot project in Dhaka as well, which is called uh, Kothaire.com. Cool. As Thank a you. as a as a broad. Uh, general uh, overview. So not a lot of people know what this and does does or Tectonics. So if you could just dive a little bit deeper and share what everyone's doing or what this unit business units are doing, that would be good. Sure. So this and that, as the name, uh, it's, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, it's, it's into online shopping of things, this and that, you know, you would, uh, anything that you would buy online, you know, we initially started with the idea of, you know, okay, let's do the e-commerce business, uh, you know, Amro, uh, will have our own, uh, online store. But once we went into the market, we saw the margins, it was not really making sense, uh, with, uh, with, uh, let's say with the, the electronics industry, the margins are very far too low. We looked into the drop shipping environment, but when, uh, uh, finally we came into the price comparison platform. So let's say if you're looking for, uh, the latest iPhone X, which is not launched yet, but you want to find out if, uh, you know, what are the offers nearby, uh, let's say from not just from your online stores, but even your offline stores. So we integrate and aggregate all the offline store prices and the online store in a, in a single page for the consumer to decide whether to walk into a store that's just, uh, you know, a hundred meter down the road or order it online. Very nice. Uh, so that's the technology that's been built by the other company called Tectonics. Correct. Okay, and then uh, Tectonics is also launching Kothaire. Yes, it's already it's already launched. You should be able to use it, uh, but it's it's more of a soft launch. Uh, we haven't le- necessarily uh, done any kind of uh, full fledged marketing. We've done FGD with Wahid Bhai in User Hub. And, uh, you know, just to get our design reviewed, uh, you know, uh, get some validation in terms of what we're doing. Uh, we're going out to the partner. So we're basically, this is your Yelp for Bangladesh. If, uh, if I were to make any uh, comparison, it's uh, uh, a place where you can find the, the, your restaurants, uh, fitness outlets, uh, spas, and uh, venues. 
it kind of uh, grew around with uh, us three co-founders, me, uh, my cousin brother, and uh, our family friend, Shine. And uh, it was always where I used to keep asking my cousin brother that, uh, then when I got married, my wife came down to uh, Bangladesh and I'm like, okay, spa you know, where can we get to makeup done? So, so, so we did not necessarily have a single location for all that information. Uh, and that is curated, that is validated. Uh, I mean, Google Maps is there, but, uh, you know, uh, everybody's posting there. So there's, there's, uh, the, the credibility is not necessarily there as of this point in Bangladesh Google Maps. And uh, so, yeah, we found a niche in the market and uh, we thought, hey, why not uh, we launch our own platform where the partners, uh, the listings, basically your restaurants, cafes, spa owners, uh, uh, salons, your fitness uh, outlets and your uh, uh, venue uh, owners, they can get verified, validated like your Google businesses, and they ma manage their own listings on kothairi.com. Very good. Very nice. Thank you. Well, I guess the cat is out of the bag. Now everyone knows or whoever is one of, you know, watching, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watching, our, watching our show would probably know that, you know, Kothairi is there. And actually, uh, it's a very, it's a much needed service. Google, like you say, Google is there, but it's not verified plus you do not even know if it's accurate or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was it added to the list uh, six months ago, two years ago, or was it yesterday? So that's mm -hmm. the Correct. Uh, Correct. Correct. Cool. Because Google, everyone can add to Google. Google can add other businesses to Google, but Google doesn't mm -hmm. take it off. They don't know that it's been shut down. Mm -hmm. True, okay. true. Unless there is somebody, uh, you know, your Google verified community where they act, they have the time to sit on the Google Maps and review every listings and let's say take it down. Uh, but if there's not enough people who are doing that, it just remains on Google Maps. Very nice, very nice. So changing gears. So tell me, um, what has been your experience in having a you know development center in Dhaka and what issues or challenges you've faced? What can you share to someone who's thinking of probably setting up a shop in Dhaka? Mm -hmm. I think um, do a lot of groundwork, do a lot of uh, research on where to go, where to set up. Um, you know, location would be number one issue that I've found in the setting up. Uh, uh, an office that is, let's say, under the jurisdiction where, as you know, recently the Bangladesh is having a crisis of uh, residential location or, or it's a commercial location and, you know, you cannot have businesses, let's say, in Baridhara, for, for example, however you walk into Baridhara, there is FedEx there as well. So, um, you know, uh, location is number one problem uh, in setting up, let's say, a startup uh, because you can't necessarily move into a commercial space and you know pay through the nose, literally, uh, being a startup, uh, number one. Number two um, would be to ensure that you get your uh, documents correct uh, from day one. Your trade license, all the way to your NBR, uh, then your uh, tax filing and now even VAT registration. Uh, if that can be sorted from day one, it makes life a lot easier. Amar Jona Jara problem is that, again, you know, I was not used to the whole living in UAE, not used to the whole taxation environment. So six months, uh, 10 months down the line, somebody knocks me, is like, hey, have you sorted out your tax? I'm like, oh, yes, <laughs> that's something I need to look into. <laughs> So, because when I started having employees and, you know, the uh, employee tax has to be uh, uh, kept in. So all that information was some incorporated or integrated into the company as I went through again. By not staying and br being brought up in Bangladesh, it was a it was a challenge, especially for somebody, let's say, who's not based in Bangladesh. Um, the third thing, I think probably the most important thing would be uh, talent. And as I discussed this also with you earlier um, in, in Lens, uh, where uh, getting uh, uh, talent and retaining talent is very, very uh, tough job in Bangladesh. And if uh, somebody is going through the whole channel of bdjobs.com or any other online job portal uh, by any uh, anybody who's handled that uh, platform, they would have an experience that hard uh, job position delay 
within uh, hours, you would have like 2,000 applications. And to sort through those applications on the platform itself, it's a painstaking task. And I think, as I mentioned to you earlier, that as, uh, it, 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 uh, it makes you angry sometimes that, you know, haven't you read the job description? Why are you applying for, the, for this position? So uh, rather than diving into more detail, I think you know what I'm trying to say. But uh, uh, I took your advice on that. And uh, what we did was we skipped the platform entirely. We used the uh, platform for the, uh, for the advertisement. But if you want to apply for the job, we created a separate form on our website. And that, by just integrating that, it uh, reduced junk application, I would say, by 80% uh, completely. Because, you know, the people who are just there to apply, uh, they, don't, they don't have time to, uh, you know, write descriptions, answer questions, uh, fill out a form, and so on and so forth. So just by introducing that, 80% of spam application just, uh, just vanished. Now, going through those rest of the 20%, uh, and then organizing interviews, we faced uh, the second problem uh, for in terms of recruitment. Uh, you know, I, we call up. Uh, you know, in our early st- early stages, we used to call up the uh, the the candidate, fix a time that okay tomorrow or you know next week we're going to have an interview with you. The time comes and goes. Nobody shows up, or they show up two three hours later. No courtesy call, no information, no email, or they say, oh, I haven't seen the email. Uh, I didn't I didn't check my email. Uh, so all kinds of excuses, which is really hard sometimes to, uh, get every, everything sorted away, especially when you're on the crunch for time. So again, we looked into technology. Uh, we were like, okay, let's look, look into a scheduling app. Uh, I think you can book me was one of those, uh, uh, uh online platform that we looked into, tied it up with our, uh, uh, with our form. If everybody, uh, qualifies through the form we link them to our uh, online booking app so it's up to them you know they book their own slots they cancel reschedule modify so on and so forth and all we see is just we see okay what's the plan for today who all are coming coming in today however that helped uh, uh, you know I would say 50 50 of our candidates were uh, uh, turning up there were still 50 percent who would not uh, uh, turn up or just not show and uh, that's something uh, I, I felt, uh, and I, I advised a lo- uh, uh, um, uh, my colleagues as well. Okay, you know, let's at least do our part of you know one step in, one step further, and then, then let's call them the night before and reconfirm the meeting to, uh, for tomorrow. And uh, but even then, unfortunately, there are there are people uh, un- uh, I've fa- the, the the struggles that I've faced that they just don't show up. Um, past the interview, let's uh, we go through the interview. We go through uh contract you know i've issued the contract to uh, give you one of my first four employees when we started the company we had only four employees uh on onto our uh, uh company and on the contract signed where uh, on the on the day we were supposed to start only two showed up so <laughs> so me and fine by our operations manager we're like what do we do now <laughs> so we had to go through the entire hiring process again so um so but yeah over over time we we refined our our value proposition we found out what people are looking for uh and uh yeah i mean i, I think you, you you would have uh, uh i think a, a lot to add as well on on to hiring in bangladesh so you know, I don't think I do. Uh, I am actually intrigued. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm very curious about the process you are employing, and I will ask you more about your question because you know, it's not about me; it's about you. That's what we are here. <laughs> we want to learn from you, and everyone should learn from you. Uh, but I can add to you: we do do that. Uh, we do have a, you know, like I told, shared with you that we do use the platforms, BD Jobs and Jacket mm-hmm. for advertisement. That there is open mm-hmm. position mm-hmm. and. That has, you know, kind of, you know, and then we bring them to our site where they have to fill out a questionnaire. So okay. you cannot just hit submit or send and then, you know, boom. Right, right, the right. comes in an attachment PDF format or you have to go to the BD jobs and like sort through this platform. So we did mm-hmm. that and that cut down a lot of the application and then, you know, we require certain skill set and if we don't like the answers, then mm-hmm. we don't even bother to call them. So we already mm-hmm. clear 
If you Correct. cannot write your properly, if you cannot write when yeah. you're graduating, dude, you are not fit to be here. At least a top right. dog. Right. Right, right. Even in descriptive answers, uh, there I have. Uh, I mean, I can show you some of the applications. They have written uh, NA, not applicable. And I'm like, you know, you know, how has your experience been in the technology industry for the last five years? NA, not applicable. And then all the entire, you know, description that we are actually looking out for the right candidate. It's all NA, no, not not applicable. So I'm like, why did you even apply? Exactly. And so that's one. Number two is that you know we do a written exam. Right, so we will send out this email to the selected shortlisted candidates saying, "Hey, so and so date show up." About half, fifty percent shows up, uh, which is okay with us. Uh, if you miss it, you miss it. I mean, that means they don't check email, which means they're not very connected to technology. And if you're not connected to technology, you don't fit into our uh, tar. You're not our candidate because uh, in this day and age, if you're checking email every three days or every four days, something's wrong with you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or you're not fit for the position, yeah. One of those two, because you know how yeah, can yeah. you? So, you know, you need every. I could understand every 24 hours, mm-hmm. right? Okay, you are very disciplined. You don't want to waste your time. You want to check once a day. That's fine. But if you're checking emails every three, four days and you're missing the written mm-hmm. exam, you're mm-hmm. out. And Especially when you know you have applied for a job, right? Like you know, you are expecting an email to come up. Well, when you're applying for a job, you're not only just applying for, to us, right? You're applying mm-hmm. elsewhere. So you want to be on top of things, right? Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. like throw the seeds out and then the plants will grow and the flowers will bloom next semester. Mm-hmm. Next mm-hmm. Season. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen that way. you got to go take care of it. So that's, mm-hmm. so, you know, we do lose a lot of things. One thing, you know, I've done, we have done right now recently, I will share with you because we didn't get a chance to touch our uh, talk very recently. We have tried the last round of applications. We did not apply on BD jobs. We went, we took the money that we were going to spend with BD jobs and we did LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google ads. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we did like, you know, what does our, what does our prospect, like like just approach it like, like we do marketing, digital marketing. Right. Okay. What does our candidate like? Is he a like frequent photo uploader? Is he like, Mm -hmm. Visiting, checking in, so those kind of things. Right, micro, right. Uh, what is it called? I forgot the uh, term that Facebook uses. But basically, we use those some stuff to target both on Facebook and LinkedIn, and we did the test to see you know what mm-hmm. it does. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, I am very happy with the quality of candidates that came in. We mm-hmm. got a few, not mm-hmm. a, like you know hundreds like we did before, mm-hmm. but those few ones that we got, I think they're better than everything else. Besides, mm-hmm. we only need one person. We don't need like 500 candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 so yep. Yeah. That's one thing, you know, we started, we share, we tried a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, but, you know, the jury is still out. We might be, I had a couple of interviews today, so we might be making an offer very soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll share more with it as it yeah, happens. Yeah, so that, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe whether to give your money to Facebook, Google, and LinkedIn, or should you. Mm-hmm. Go spend uh, money with the uh, job portals. Job portals. Yeah. So now going back, you know, you you touched on a few things. You know, obviously, you know, this is not any by any means. I'm trying to scare anyone who's thinking of moving into Bangladesh, saying you don't move in, because these are challenges, and wherever there is challenges, uh, there are opportunities as well. Correct. Right. Uh, so you touched on value proposition. Can you f- figure out, you know, what were your findings for value proposition? With regards to tectonics, uh, with like you said, you know, you found out the value proposition. So what people want. Uh, so we, you got you had to re- realign your, you know, whether it was the salaries or whether it's the flexibility. What do you think talent in Dhaka is looking for? Okay, so the, I mean, uh, as in, like, why I moved to Bangladesh instead of uh, pursuing another company in India. No, shit, no. But basically, what I'm asking is like you know, so as you hire, as you are hiring people, like you know, do you mm-hmm. think you know talent is looking for a um, higher salary? Do they want more flexibility? Do they want what kind of you know? What does your what does talent in general across the board in Dhaka mm-hmm. is looking mm-hmm. for? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a mixed. Uh, I think there's a clear market segment. Uh, let's say. Uh, if we were to segregate them in with regards to salary uh, as a primary component, because, you know, there are candidates, salary is their only 
requirement. Uh, they don't worry about location. They don't worry about uh, culture. They don't worry about what they're working on. So if it is within the salary segment, then, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, even if they get a package that is more than 500 taka, they would shift. Like they don't, they just don't show up the next day. Uh, you know, no questions asked, nothing. They, you know, there are those candidates, so they're those employees as well. Um, but those are primarily on the lower segment, like say, less than 50,000 taka per month salary packages. Um, now, though, uh, if you're looking for, I, I personally now, you know, starting to consider ta- ta- uh, employees uh, personally that we need to hire people who fit our culture, uh, uh, number one. Because what I found out is if we r- hire the wrong candidate, not necessarily in terms of their skill set, but they're just not the right fit for the entire team. It, it unfortunately, it becomes a poison, and uh, it it spreads uh, through the entire team. Uh, and, you know, uh, don't want to do any name calling, but uh, 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 it's just uh, affects the, the the whole team motivation. Everybody. Uh, looks to him and he's like, oh, he's able to do it. Why can't I start doing it? You know, like, and then he starts. To, so slowly, everybody's starting to slack. That's the other uh, uh, for the culture aspect. Now, another type of employee that I found is they're looking to projects. They want to do new things. They want, let's say, uh, primarily now for, for example, Tectonics. Our clientele are primarily uh, UA based or Middle East based. And some of the projects that we are working on are not necessarily there in implementation within Bangladesh. So, um, and I make it a point that we try to do a lot of A-B testing, uh, what's new out there, what's launched, like maybe a technology that's just launched this year and uh, no, uh, uh, let's say bigger comp- corporations or organizations are not ready to implement it because they want they want to wait for, you know, update 1.1 to come out and only then uh, test it out. But, I'm, uh, uh, since we're currently now, uh, for example, let's say in terms of hosting, we're on AWS on Amazon, and uh, it's so easy to just set up another instance, get uh, get the DevOps guy to test things out, you know, um, and they love that because they're like, hey, you know, I don't have to ask permission from Mohammed Bhai to set up a new instance. Can I try this? He, they have my full permission. Like, test it out. It works. You, uh, uh, you know, it can be integrated. It's value add for us. Push to live. So um, that, that testing environment, what I felt was a lot of the employees complained about in their previous work experiences that, look, I have an idea. Uh, can I try this out? And they felt that that was something that uh, one of the reasons why they wanted to leave their previous company because it was they were not they did not feel that they were doing value add to the company they were just read verbatim and write verbatim uh, for the company. Very nice. So yeah, that's good to know. Uh, what are the things? What are the your what? I mean, you touched on a few things. I think the location matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. What are your you know thoughts about location? You know any particular area you think draws more uh, candidates or more employees than others, or have is this the only location you started with? Did you have it in any other place? Mm-hmm. I mean, Gulshan. Uh, currently, uh, we're based in Nikiton and uh, or let's say the Gulshan area. Our first uh, where we started off was at Regis, uh, uh, just with the one table, me and my cousin brother trying to do all the hiring. Um, but uh, you know, th- uh, to start uh, at a location where let's say it's accessible, kind of to almost the the wider population, like people from Rampura could come, people from Mirpur could come, people from Uttara could come, even for, uh, even from Mogwazar and uh, uh, Motijil, for example. So I, uh, you know, my idea was kind of like to be kind of central to the uh, to Dhaka. But what I found over time is people from Uttara uh, do not prefer to come down to Nikitan. And even if they do, unfortunately, it uh, time becomes a problem in terms of attendance. But that is also a problem even for people within Rampura. Like if, uh, uh, let's say nowadays with the with the weather, 
uh, you know, the, uh, the flooding everywhere in, in Dhaka and, you know, they're not get, able to get through. And in those circumstances, there's nothing that much, pretty much we can do. But uh, uh, in, uh, location is, is not just a factor for us, but it's also a factor, big factor for the employee. Because, for example, I have one employee who is in Nikiton itself. So, and he loves it. Like he comes maybe sometimes half an hour before work and he leaves a half an hour later after work. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go to Kikorgo. You know, let me enjoy. It. So he, he's, he's having a ball and, uh, uh, you know, that culture is there. Uh, like uh, where he, they don't feel that they're coming to office, office. And, you know, they, um, uh, you know, as you, as you saw our office, you know, we have a table tennis there or in, you know, you know, in free time they play Xbox. So, uh, during weekends or let's say Thursday night, uh, you know, the we, well, we used to pop up the Xbox and everybody is like, okay, let's have a game of FIFA before we head out. So the, again, that, that, that culture that uh, we were trying to build out rather than just cabins uh, for designers and developers that, okay, you know, it's uh, this is the project, this is the task, and that's what you got to do. It's beautiful. Uh, beautiful. So we talked about paperwork, location, talent. What else? I mean, how has your uh, management or managing the talent uh, remotely has been? What's your experience like? I think engagement. Uh, I mean, I personally, I would love to be there more often. Um, you know, I think 26. In 2015, 2016, I was there. I had to be there almost every other two, three months. Uh, every other two, three months, I was there. Uh, but then, ever since, as you know, I became uh, I became a father in 2016 uh, December. Uh, the the traveling kind of took a little hit. Uh, I had to be grounded a little more in Abu Dhabi. Uh, but needless, uh, I would still had to every instead of two to three months, it's now every four to five months. Uh, and I'm doing uh, via uh, like I'm speaking to the entire team, my operations guy, my admin guy, every day via Skype. Uh, you know, um, if there is anything that needs to that needs my approval, then I, uh, you know, uh, look into it. But uh, slowly, what I found out, you know, the more I delegate, the better it is, uh, especially when I'm re- I'm on a remote place. Uh, uh, there are certain things earlier, uh, you know, my ops guy would check like, Hey, I need to make these purchases for the kitchen. I'm like, do it. You know, <laughs> don't ask me, <laughs> just go ahead and do it. He's like, no, man, I need to get, need your approval before I do this. I'm like, no, just do it. Cause you know, I'm in the middle, I'm, I'm in another country in a different time zone. And you ask me wh- whether I should make a purchase for the kitchen. So, so I so say, you know what I mean? Like, so, uh, these are the things I think, you know, it helped me when, once I delegated, I'm like, look, X, X, Y, Z. Yeah, these are things you don't need to call me. It's your call. You, you, uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, you can make the call on those purchases or decisions. Same goes for now, you know, leave applications. Same goes for your, uh, uh, you know, advanced salary, so on and so forth. Uh, previously, you know, I used to get that email over here and now I'm busy with the company in Abu Dhabi. So I had to, again, draw a line that look, you know, all your HR and accounts related, you need to uh, talk to either Fine Bai or Tanvir Bai regarding, regarding these issues. Very nice, very nice. Actually, it uh, sounds like you know, I, I, my twin is talking. Um, because <laughs> when I sound like my twin who's talking, because I have decided, in, I've, like a few, ever since I've, I think it's been what, a six months, six, eight months, this whole year. I haven't like looked at all these things, purchases, daily purchases. I mean, why do I need to? Why do I have people on the payroll? If I'm going to make a decision, then I don't need you. I can go find, I can do it myself. So yeah, Yeah. delegation is a very big thing. And I think, um, do you agree that overall, a lot of Bangladeshis in general, and again, I'm overgeneralizing it, that they will uh, try to make every little tiny itty bitty decisions, right? And as a result, they're like, you know, not focusing on the big stuff, right? Mm-hmm. If you are looking at kitchen purchases, uh, groceries, things like that, then when are you going to look at other stuff? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I think it again. It's the culture because they're so used to that culture. Maybe in the previous workforce, uh, work environment, that even a decision for the pantry had to be taken up from the management. Um, the the all. I mean, over here and even in UAE, or you know, there, there are some parts of Europe, or they have that chain of command that okay, yes, they you know, but it it needs to 
stop somewhere that you know you don't ask let's say the ceo or coo about your daily purchase you report about them at the end of the year and maybe the the management would say that okay i think you guys need to reduce the uh, the coffee intake that you guys are doing on a monthly basis or you know dud cha na ke you know wrong cha so on those cases okay maybe for for budgeting purposes you can do that for for the following year but whether i'm going to make that purchase uh, today or tomorrow that's something that needs to be done on on a lo- on a local uh, basis yeah keep on talking about culture so mm-hmm. i think let's talk about this and that slash tectonics culture i mean can you mm-hmm. share more about what's your culture like what do you guys do differently mm-hmm. the- so i mean i mean this and that let's say in terms of full term full time employees just me and my uh, uh business partner who is also my life partner uh shabnam moidin and uh it's just us here doing the sales and marketing within uh uae abu dhabi we go to clients get uh, get the uh, uh, lock the clients in we get the requirements get my team from bangladesh uh, Tecton- in tectonics to come on a skype call we have a three way skype session just uh, uh to get the requirements done if is if it is something that we can do uh you know we take note down the requirements and the client is fixed uh the team from bangladesh looks after uh pretty much all of the client servicing we hook them up into a skype group or even a facebook group for example and uh you know from time to time i jump into the calls and check if everything is running fine but apart from that uh in uh, tectonics work environment um i have uh, at least tried to introduce an easy culture where um uh, it's more of goal based rather than hour based uh so if you have tasks xyz that you need to uh get done then i don't really care that you're going down 10 times to smoke as long as you deliver the the stuff that is uh, uh meet you uh, meet my deadline at 5 pm for example um or you know you can go for a movie for uh, for 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 all they have to but uh, uh there there are pros and cons into that approach uh when i initially started out with that um as you might have noticed i had an xbox uh and uh, uh w- so using that uh, let's say the trump card that hey i can uh, you know play and uh, as long as i can deliver uh it uh, uh, it should be fine but with that kind of also you know again if there is if again if i was there and i could monitor everybody's performance and uh look into the how much time uh, a certain co- aspect of the development should have taken that like this should have taken you one uh, one hour instead of four hours to do um that's where employees or colleagues starts to slack uh cuz obviously he has that trump card hey i can you know get it done but then when that continues from day to day week to on week and month on month that's when we had to make a call and we're like hey you know what no i think we need to take take the step up, uh uh take one step back and then refocus on our development and then again the, uh, you know we bring in the uh, occasional let's say uh, we even had our own cook ups in office uh you know just to uh get all, everybody on board have that one uh what do you call a culture where they don't feel that they're at work um uh we don't we we have an open office concept where everybody can literally uh feel free to as if they're sitting in their own home workstation rather than uh in an office space very nice very nice uh, and any other activities you do i saw you do cook ups you play xbox you have table tennis and i think you do lunch as well right uh yes uh but uh i mean we uh we want to expand into uh uh tra- workshops and trainings um uh you know uh, call in the all the uh, designers uh, for, uh, again this comes to the topic of recruitment um uh d- finding really good uh, designers or visualizers uh who are willing to come on full time is quite tough uh there are a lot of freelancers in bangladesh as you uh, very well know the, the 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 talent pool in terms of designers or freelancers in bangladesh is quite high and 
Uh, a lot of these guys, their quality of work is good, but they don't want to be bound to a contract or to a nine to five uh, uh, job. Uh, they would rather work remotely, work on multiple projects. So that's I, we wanted to develop you know, going forward our t- uh, talent pool base. So we invite uh, uh, freelancers all across uh, Bangladesh to uh, showcase their work, join our talent pool, so that in future, if we have any projects, we can. Uh, share the project requirements through our uh, talent pool and whoever is free and willing to do uh, take on the job and they basically respond back to us. And, you know, we also want to conduct uh, workshops within our office space where uh, if there's something new or like, for example, AWS uh, that we're testing things out with uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, you know, we want to conduct a small workshop to show the 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 benefits of using AWS as opposed to your Bluehost, GoDaddy, so and so forth. And because uh, we have found a lot of flexibility with AWS and upon checking into the market in Bangladesh, very few people actually use AWS, not just for clients within Bangladesh, but also clients abroad. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think, you know, that's where a, a few companies have come out or mushroomed up where they're actually reselling AWS services in Dhaka. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we do also, we do participate in it just so that, you know, off the, the society thing. We also mm-hmm. go to AWS trainings and they're actually also gearing up because they, mm-hmm. it's a good market, Bangladesh, you mm-hmm. know, to mm-hmm. trade in terms of AWS opportunities. And not just AWS, there is Microsoft Cloud as well. I don't, do not yep. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you had a chance to look at it or not, I mean, I do not have the details, but maybe they're the same. Maybe they're not. So, great. Uh, what else? So, are you guys, how big is your team in Dhaka? Uh, we have a total team of 12, um, mixed with designers, developers, um, admin uh, staff as well. And uh, we're, we have on and off intern teams that join us. Uh, but permanently, as permanent staffs, we have uh, uh, 12 uh, uh, de- dedicated designers, developers who have been with us. They're the 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 oldest. Uh, I think uh, the most senior have been around for I think close to close to two years now. Oh, great! Now interns. Let's we didn't talk about that. Let's talk about that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you are laughing. <laughs> uh, what, what do you want to talk about? Uh, what has been your experience? For how long do they come? You know, the kind of what? I mean, what did you learn from the whole experience? Um, again, I think uh, the 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 point where non intern students also apply. Uh, like uh, you know, we've clearly mentioned that this is for students uh, who uh, or who have recently graduated um to uh, to be fit for the position but then you know you have people who are applying who have like two three years experience they're not necessarily uh, they've not recently graduated uh they also apply through the again going through their whole application process but that aside um with interns it's a tricky tricky uh, uh um um what should i say tricky situation for us to handle because number one you know we we cannot set a uh, heavy requirements list because you know they're just fresh off the university and um, upon reviewing certain of certain uh, internship uh, let's say requirements on BD jobs for other companies uh, I I started question like uh, you know are you willing to hire somebody full time or you know is this an intern position because you, ideally an intern is looking to learn from the company as well because well uh, you know it's it's more of a training on the job. Uh, um, for a lot of the uh, uh, tasks that uh, he or she would be doing. Now, that uh, once they come on board, let's say through throughout the hiring, time is usually dedication. Uh, with, you know, coming into the whole uh, nine to five uh, scenario, being on time is usually an issue uh, with the students. Now, uh, num- more so for people who are currently still studying, or let's say they still have uh, a semester to go. That is understandable, though. Um, you know, you know, he's he still needs to get his degree. He's doing this internship on uh, on the side, and then looking to become a full time employee post uh, post graduation. So, um, 
but stu- but interns who have just recently completed to have that same slack from them with regards to, uh, to being on time, uh, doing deliverable reporting. Reporting is another issue that I found with because uh, uh, all our interns are allocated to uh, a senior staff. So uh, the the senior staff teaches them the 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 ropes into the projects or the the technology that they're working on, and. Uh, the reporting some, uh, sometimes is an issue where um, they feel, I, I personally feel that they, 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 they don't ask enough questions, right? So if they're stuck somewhere, uh, that that thing, Jacha, let me ask my senior or let me ask the, my, my, my in charge that, hey, I'm stuck here, what, what can I do? Because they're, fe- they're in fear, oh, I'm an internship, <laughs> you know, like uh, if, I, if, if, uh, uh, if I know, if, this might be a very simple thing and if I ask, if I ask my senior about this, I might lose my internship. So that's uh, that's that's counterintuitive for us because counterproductive for us because um, the intern might have spent like a day or two on a problem where he could have just asked two days ago uh, to a senior, and then we could have been were already working on task two and three rather than the intern being stuck in task one for one uh, one whole day. So how do you overcome that challenge? communication I mean we even had that problem with our full-time staff uh, some of our full-time staff that uh, joined in uh, you've met uh, our senior team leader uh, mr. Saddam he uh, he had to drill it down to the uh, all our uh, all our engineers all our designers that look you know you need to ask more questions you know if you're stuck somewhere you know flag it straight away that look you know I'm stuck here because the quicker they flag, uh, the quicker we can approach. And I, in a lot of sense, I had to uh, uh, be more approachable. So um, I had to break the barriers of your, you know, employer-employee relation and, uh, you know, you know, even ask them about the entire uh, no- normal day and then be frank with them, be uh, free, o- free and open to them. And what I saw in return that they were starting to communicate more not just with me, but with Saddam or the entire team as well. Because uh, they felt that, okay, if I say something wrong, it's okay. Uh, you know, uh, you know I can, the, it's again, the, that whole Google culture where they, they don't necessarily hire uh, the know-it-all person, but they're looking to hire somebody who can solve problems, uh, who, is, who can go out there and find a solution. So that's what I'm trying to promote uh, through telling my employees as well that, you know, like if you're stuck somewhere, let us know. Well, that's wonderful. And this is actually, this turned out to be a rather, uh, I had a different idea about this call Uh and this became a very HR related call, right? You know, talent management, (laughs) <laughs> there is value in a lot of value because you know, I think you know one of the things I will share with you, and I will be very, very frank. In Dhaka, we do a lot of events. Even I am guilty of that. We do a lot of events that's focused on telling people entrepreneurship, inspiring people to do jump into entrepreneurship, things like that. But no one really sat down, as far as I know, and start talking about talent management. Because mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. a very critical component. It's one thing when you are at an MVP stage and you, it's just you and your co-founder is just you building up this, you know, concept. But as you sooner or later, you are going to need talent. Mm-hmm. You're going to need team members. And um, I'm sad, and as as well as happy that you know we got a chance to connect and talk about talent management and how you have actually cracked the nut or, you know, approached it and how you are actually look, look, looking at other things, like, you know, the, that you're touching on culture. Uh, sometimes we read about the Google culture and feels like, oh, that's Google, that's California. Mm-hmm. But the fact that, you know, you're bringing it down to Dhaka and that kind of culture environment exists, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. uh, going forward, what other things you plan to do? Uh, anything that you can share that's project in your mind? Uh, Not ventures, you know, in terms yeah. of employee management, talent management, mm-hmm. you're going to try mm-hmm. out. Yeah, I mean, with uh, Kothari, uh, sorry, with uh, Tectonics, for example, as I mentioned, Jay, we ro- really want to look into hiring uh, uh, 
let's say, uh, talent that is being fetched directly from university. We want to create a uh, career path for that employee and show and inform him from day one that this is your career path within the company. Because number one thing that I found with a lot of the students that I speak to in Bangladesh, uh, whenever they go to an intern for an internship, they don't see themselves as that they can be the CEO of the company in in uh, in uh, uh, in a certain time span within in Bangladesh, for example, uh, Google uh, uh, Sundar uh, I forget the Google CEO's uh, name, Sundar Pichai. That's I, I, uh, yes, Sundar Pichai. Yes. So I mean, that kind of environment in Bangladesh may never be possible. That an outsider who joined as a software engineer. Uh, and became the CEO of the company in uh, the span of less than 10 years, I believe, right? So that is the 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 idea or the concept that I want to bring about in at least Tectonic, that look, if you have something good, if you uh, can contribute to the company, and if you can bring this comp- move, take this company forward, then yes, you, you will go up the ranks, you know, from all the way from the intern to a junior position, to a senior position, to a project lead, to project management, to uh, even a COO or a CEO, right? So that's what I'm trying to, you know, drill down to the students and look, you know, uh, there are companies out there in Bangladesh who uh, are who can give you a full career path. That look, you know, it's not like your position just stops at senior project, uh, senior developer and that's it. You know, you cannot, uh, take that uh, step higher into management because uh, a lot of the students complain that look I'm only going to XYZ company just for the internship because that's all what they want there's no career path into the uh, into the company uh, uh, in future so, so you, sorry, sorry, sorry go ahead, I'll, go ahead. No, I'll let you finish so I mean there in doing that, there is a challenge. Um, uh, we tried to approach quite a few universities, uh, look through their, uh, you know, open days and uh, to recruitment days. Uh, we wanted to participate in a few, uh, and again to get a stall. And as uh, as you might know, that it's quite uh, complicated to uh, take part into those uh, events, uh, or you know, they're already pre-booked even before the registration opens. Uh, the registration opens and it's already sold out. So there are quite a few hurdles. So we are now, I think, uh, let's say 2018, we want to uh, approach the, the department heads uh, that, you know, why don't you recommend your, uh, the, the, your, uh, your uh, students to us? Um, you know, we, uh, we are open to bring, uh, accepting your students. You know, if you have uh, certain students that you want to recommend, you know, just call us, email us. You know, we can uh, bring them in, give them live uh, exposure to you know uh, live projects uh and you know they can play around a few with uh, with the uh, technology as well you, sorry go ahead man. no no that's fine the last question i think and i'll probably uh hopefully this will be the last uh question since it's at the top of the hour uh is do you do you is it natural do you convert your interns into a full-time employees or do they end up the wrap up their internships and leave what have you done well, in our experience, um, it's it's quite uh, what should I say? Um, uh, since we are a startup company, uh, a lot of uh, a startup company that does not have any digital footprint in Bangladesh, uh, you know, you don't see our name in Channel I or you don't see our names anywhere in the magazine. So they're like, okay, I mean, can I ask you a right? So um, it's all primarily overseas based so one feedback that i've received for one of the intern was uh, my parents are not happy about me working in tectonics because it's not a uh, well known company so um, they rather work for a company that uh, you know let's say likes of uh, magneto digital or uh, likes of webable that are you know other namas market and you know their parents could say oh chama chele works for so and so uh so uh, if they say amache works for chele me works for tectonics so tectonics kuthay ki kore tara ki kore tader byabsha thik ache naki tara bidesher kaj kore are you sure tara ki paisa dite parbe so all those um problems are there with uh, what i've uh, faced with uh, uh, uh interns 
uh, people who are seeking for a job, they're already obviously, you know, into the, into the, you know, job line directly, but for the interns to consider a full-time job into tectonics, uh, I found that they have a, uh, uh, at least not from their end, if not from their end, from their uh, parents' side that uh, to reconsider their options. Um, but yeah, we have had uh, uh, interns who have joined us as full-time. And uh, uh, just recently, actually, our uh, accounts, she joined in as a uh, as an intern, and now she's uh, looking into our uh, uh, reporting to our senior uh, admin uh, manager, and she's now a full-time uh, uh, accounts uh, personnel. Very nice. Well, line by, um, I did not. I did all the questioning, which, as it says, I asked you to answer. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I don't know if you have any questions for me or not. If not, uh, do you have anything that you want to ask or you want to get it out there? that you think people should know no i mean uh, i mean once again thank you for having me and uh, not just me but my, uh, with me my entire team at uh, this and that kothare and uh, sorry tectonics as well and uh, we uh, we would love to take part and participate in a lot of your uh, future activities and uh, uh, also to inform all your viewers that uh, you know check up uh, tectonics uh, read up on uh, this and that we're going to have a few more workshops that uh, we want to launch by the end of this year and starting next year and you know hopefully uh, you know we can come to bangladesh with uh, a new fresh approach that uh, that even the parents now will say acha tectonics that's going to happen it takes time i will tell you yeah. uh, yeah. you know we, i mean i shouldn't say it so boldly but you know we went through that phase uh, at hub uh, where who didn't even know about us and recruitment was a challenge just because of the same reasons you say that like, you know they're looking for brand names like yeah my son is at unilever but you know he is just sitting there sending out letters mm -hmm. like that's what happens in most of the banks right they do we take interns and they make them do photocopies do filing or mail out those pin numbers to the pin resets right mm -hmm. so if you come to companies like small companies and i'm going to call it small quote unquote not startup at tectonics or hubdaka you end up doing a lot of work the experience mm -hmm. that you get and the work that you do in three months mm -hmm. i mean you will never get it anywhere else and hopefully you know that culture will shift mm -hmm. will change uh, so, but hang in there. It's going to happen. Uh, thank you very much for making the time. Thank you. Thank I, know you. Busy. I know you have to be somewhere now. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it because I think uh, we found a topic, talent management that we talked about, and I'm really happy we did it. Thank you. So uh, Perfect. We'll thank you. Stay in touch. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.